Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. I have been solving math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Review, the official guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You will find it at MBA.com. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 179, problem solving number 198. Let's take a look at it. It says one half plus one third plus one fourth equals 13 over x. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this side of the, of the equation here so that uh, we have something to work with, something, something manageable. This is, this is too cumbersome. So let's, let's do it. Let's simplify it. Let's find the common denominator. Common denominator of 2, 3, and 4 would be 12 because 12 goes evenly into all of these three numbers. So 12 goes into 2 6 times, 12 goes into 3 4 times, 12 goes into, 12 goes into 3 4 times, and 12 goes into 4 3 times. Let's see what that is. 6 plus 4 is 10 plus that's 11. 11 over 12. And I'm told that that equals this quantity right here. Is it 11? No, it's 13. It's 13. 10 plus 4 plus 3, 13. And that equals 13 over x. Well, there you go. That makes our life much easier. That makes our life much simpler. So if I tell you that I have some quantity, some equation, some situations where 13 over 12 equals 13 over x, what do you suppose that x is? has to be 12 obviously because that's the only way 13 over 12 will equal some other ratio 13 over 12 and 13 over 12 that tells me that x is 12 well that's a very helpful information let's see what the problem says now which of the following must be an integer the key word the most important word in this question is what one word can you find it one word the one word the most important word here is must as opposed to which of the following may be true which of the following could be true that's not what they're asking, which of the following must be true, which means if I find one situation where it is not true, I can cross it out. That's what must mean. Must means it has to be true all the time. I have to find only one exception when it is not true, and I can disqualify that statement. Let's look at the first statement. First statement says, x over 12. And the question simply is, which of the following must be an integer? We just found that x is 12. If x is 12, is 12 over 8 an integer? Of course it's not. Statement 1 is not true. Let's look at the answer choices. Anything that contains 1 in it, I'm going to cross it out. So that rules out C. That rules out E. This is how I do in the real exam. In the real exam, I actually, for every single problem on that scratch paper they give you, the contraption, that the pieces, sheets of paper that they give you, for every single question, so I write down A, B, C, D, E very quickly. For every single question, even though on the screen it does not say A, B, C, D, E, I write down myself. And when, this is a 1, 2, 3 question. This is what I call a 1, 2, 3 question, where we give you three statements. And the 1, 2, 3 statements, I never solve all three of the statements together like most people do. Most people solve all of the three statements one by one. What do they do? Which statement do we start with? They always start with statement number one. I don't know why. I started here with one because this is a very simple question. If the statement number one gave me trouble, I wouldn't, I wouldn't agonize over it. I would have moved on to statement number two. I start with the st statement that is the easiest one for me to first to solve. Usually in a one to three questions, that are out of three statement, one is very easy. And one of them is the most difficult one. So I start with the easiest statement first. I find out whether it is right or wrong. And I, based on that, I cross out the impossible answers. Here, Statement 1 is not true. That tells me that the answer cannot be C or E. I don't have to do all of this thing in this particular question. I'm just doing it for your benefit. This question is actually very simple. Statement number 2 says x over 12. Well, we just found that x is 12. So 12 over 12, of course, is an integer, which means statement 2 is correct. Which means any answer choice that does not have Roman numeral 2 in it, I'm going to, I'm going to check that, cross it out next. Let me use a different color so you can see it different reason, different colors for different reasons. So I'm going to cross out any answer choice that does not have 2 in it. 
Let's see, we can cross out A. A, A does not work. And we can cross out C. C was already gone, of course. And that's about it. Let's look at the last statement. The last statement says x over 24. Our x, which x we found is to be 12. 12 over 24 is not an integer. That's half. That's not an integer. So it looks like the only answer to our only statement that works is statement number two. The answer is B. That's it. But that's what it is. This was actually a very straightforward, simple question. Sometimes you get lucky. I don't know why it's so simple. It's a number 98. 198, there are 250 and they're supposed to go become a little bit more difficult as you go higher in the number. But anyway, that doesn't always work. And of course it does not work in the real exam. The real exam they are not arranged in any order. They are all mixed up. They start you out with a medium question and then from there it just becomes computer adaptive. Uh, they adapt based on your ability. They start you out at the medium and if, if, you, if you get a few of those medium questions right, they move you up to the medium hard and if you start getting those right, they give you the hard questions and your, your job in the real exam is to answer as many hard questions as possible. It's very important that you don't blow the first three or four questions in the very beginning. They start you out, as I said, in the medium, but if you blow the first three or four questions, if you make any mistake in the first few questions, it, it, the computer assumes that, uh, that you are a dummy. And then it, puts you, it takes you to the easy question and then from that point on, it takes a very long time to build it up back to the medium. So be careful in the, in, in the, in the beginning. But anyway, this was, this was it. I hope you found it helpful. If you wish to buy my DVDs in which I show you the solutions to all the math problems, or if you wish to hire me for personal private tutoring, in either case, go to my website at www.prep, P-R-E-P, prep, for, F-O-R, for, gmail.com and send me an email. Alright? Thank you.